Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Venom Unleashed from the Web of Venom. This is a one-shot, and very apropos name, because, you know, it's Venom, he's in the form of a dog, and he's a solo mission, so he's, you know, unleashed, he's an uncollared dog, he's gonna be taken to one of those parks. Shut up. All right, so let's get started on this. Ryan Stegman is the writer. What? He's not gonna draw the comic? He's usually drawing the comic book, the Venom comics, and all of a sudden he's just like, nah, I'm gonna write this one. I'm gonna have somebody else do the pencils for me. Though somebody else is actually two people, Kyle Hotz and Juan Geddon. Okay, uh, and if I butcher these names again, I'm sorry. So we've got a couple of anchors on this. Mark Deering, Scott Hanna, Livesey, Roberto Poggi, Poggi, see, I think it's Poggi, Victor Olazabra, and Juan Geddon. On, those are on inks. And on colors, we got Dan Brown, Matt Yaki. Andrew Crossley and Carlos Cabrera and VCs Clayton Cowles on letters. Uh, cover art, we got Ryan Stegman, J.P. Meyer, and Frank Martin. And variant cover, Nick Braddon and Chris Sotomayor. Excuse me, Nick Bradshaw and uh, Chris Sotomayor. So, you know, there's that. Anyway, this whole issue, there's really not a lot going on. And it it's actually very fair for first time for somebody writing. Um, I'm glad that that Ryan Stegman got to actually get his, his hands wet in, in actually drawing instead of just, um, excuse me, in writing as opposed to just drawing in this particular case. And I'm looking forward to one of these days, Ryan Stegman actually creating his own book, uh, much like, you know, there's some people who actually do that. They do everything within a book. Um, uh, what do you call it? Tom Scioli is, is one of them most recent coming to my mind. But um, I see that happening for him. For right now, this this was a very, it wasn't a very deep story. It wasn't a particularly great story. There's a lot of things that you're not going to, or that you might not understand what's going on. There's some characters here from the uh, Venom Lethal Protector. I think that was a nine issue story. I can't remember, but I know that I only read the first five issues. So there's that. Um... I don't remember these characters. They might have been in the book. I honestly like I just can't remember these these machines with the the sonic excavators, which is kind of odd. But um Carnage has been going around putting these little mind worms inside of people's noses, you know, bring them up to their brains and and the um the Venom symbiote is actually going around grabbing all of them and brings them back to and it, it was actually really cool because if anybody owns a dog or a cat even you know that sometimes these animals will go out and actually hunt an animal and bring it back to you and show you its worth. You know what I'm saying? They'll be like, you know, look, I have killed for you, master. It's like, you're such a good boy or a good girl in this, you know, in some cases. I got a female cat and she, she's brought me a couple of birds. Anyway, um, yeah, man, this was, for all, uh, it's hard to really get into this. I didn't overly enjoy this. I think I'm more happy for Ryan Stegman than I am about the story in and of itself. Granted, it's giving some insights to what's going on. Carnage is in this comic book. Right after it says the end, it's not actually the end. The problem is it just right away goes into something else as though there shouldn't have even been the end there. So it was really weird. It was it was genuinely weird. It it's like I'm of course gonna flip all the way to the end. I don't know who wouldn't. I guess like the people who don't stay for the after credit scene or the mid credit scene for a comic book movie. Like what the frick is the matter with you? Anyhow, comic book movie noob. But um, in this case, like it's just it was a weird. It, there was no transition. It was just kind of like a rough. Uh, okay, the end. By the way, here's some more. It's like what the frick, dude. But you do get some vet, uh, some carnage in this. Which is cool. Which is cool. I can't complain about that. Nobody complains about Carnage. Nobody, I don't remember anybody ever sitting there talking about, yeah, so there's a surprise appearance by Carnage in here. What, where's your excitement, boy? So, um, yeah, there was a story. Wasn't much. You could tell there wasn't a whole lot of scripting in this, as, you know, as far as actual writing, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, it's more of a visual story, which is fine, because, again... It's an artist who's actually making this story. Like, when you think of, uh, here we go, here's where people are going to either be like, oh, no, good comparison, or how dare you make this comparison. When you think about the way that Jack Kirby writes, all right, Jack Kirby wrote his own stories. He should not get writer's credit on those stories because he because he wasn't the final writer on the story. No, no, no. Uh, there was a script, and then he decided to, or a plot, he decided to write his own story, and then Stan Lee, or whomever, would turn around and just be like, okay, here we go, bang, you know, saying, this is what I'm going to make everybody say and do. 
Um, not everybody always followed his notes. Uh, that being said, sometimes he did actually create his own books. Case in point, The New Gods, where there was a whole lot of writing. Like you could tell this guy was not particularly great at writing. My opinion, here, here, here come the fights. People are going to start adding me. Um, he wasn't particularly great on the scripts and whatnot. It was just, you know, very verbose, like blah, 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 blah. And meanwhile, me, I'm just sitting there like, dude, you're an artist. Why aren't you telling the story with, you know, the art? In this particular case, uh, Stegman, who is an artist, doesn't uh, actually do the art in this book. So instead, he's writing this book for the artist. Think about that. So now the artist is the one telling Ryan Stegman's story. That's, I'm not going to call it the three-dimensional chess, but it's interesting as all hell. And it's, it, it, it's almost like watching battle chess in some ways, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, it's just a stupid game of chess, but the pieces are moving and punching each other in the, in the grill, you know what I'm saying? They're stabbing each other and breaking each other's heads open, like a Harry Potter moment, you know? Um, so, so that's kind of what the book felt like to me. It, it, it felt like he's writing the book, not for us, but rather for the artist, and the artist is translating it to us. So that's cool. That's cool. As a guy who's gone overseas and... And uh, very rarely have I had the opportunity to be a translator, but I've, I've often enough uh, had to have translators. And uh, this, was, this was cool. <laughs> this, was, this felt like that, you know? Uh, I'm talking to you, but I'm really talking to the translator. And then the translator is trying to find the right words to match up. Anyway, guys, this was enjoyable. It wasn't great, not by any stretch of the imagination. Should you get it? Well, I just gave you everything that I got. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to buy, what not to buy. Um, so, so it's really an up-to-you thing. This does give some, uh, some uh, food for thought for what's going on in the future. Um, but that being said, the book is here, and I was pretty impressed. This is the first, to my understanding, the first book that Ryan Stegman has ever written. Um, if that's not reason enough to grab the book, Professor Bell Comic Book University, class dismissed.